Thank you very much. Hello, everybody. Oh, thank you, Mr. Speaker. I uh, appreciate that kind introduction, and thank you for your incredible, talented, and uh, resourceful leadership of Alec. Um, for all you have done, for what you continue to do, and for the great citizens of uh, your state, Virginia. And I'm really uh, delighted to join you and all of you in the audience. Um, Alan, let me thank you again for uh, all your, you've done and for your competent staff. We've really enjoyed working with them. They've done a fabulous job pulling this event together, and they're typically very professional and are a joy to work with. So uh, thank you very much. And uh, most importantly, of course, thanks all of you in this audience, um, including, I guess, particularly my friends from Colorado. Uh, great to see you for all the ways that you have advanced freedom and liberty in your various states. Sometimes we forget to say thanks, and uh, I want you all to know how much uh, what you do is appreciated in uh, so many different ways. So thank you. Um, some of you might know that uh, four years ago, five years ago now, I guess I was a candidate for the United States Senate. And of course, uh, what all candidates remember most about a campaign is, uh, is election night, that moment when uh, your constituents sent you all to serve uh, them as uh, their representatives in our government. And they sent me packing back to the beer business. <laughs> and I think I remember having a few beers that night, actually. Um, but uh, it was a great experience. And uh, um, I think serving our country is, uh, is a great service in whatever capacity. And uh, I regret in many ways that uh, I wasn't successful in representing the state of Colorado and this great nation in Washington. But I'm really happy to still be in the beer business. <laughs> um, Mr. Speaker, you correctly noted in your introduction that I'm here today in my capacity as chairman of Adolf Coors Foundation and Castle Rock Foundation. And you mentioned a figure of $154 million that our family's foundation has shared with our community for the last 34 years. Now, that doesn't make us a huge foundation, um, but it's a foundation that was built on the generosity of not only the wealth created by my grandfather, but uh, two of his sons, my father and my uncle Bill Coors, who uh, for, uh, it's not, I can't say forgot, how do we say that, who uh, decided not to take that personally to add to their wealth, but decided to put it into a foundation for the good of uh, our community and those in our community. Uh, $154 million over 34 years doesn't really tell the real story. Um, it is a story of the programs to stem domestic violence, to stop meth use amongst our kids, to help those with mental and physical disabilities, to support the Boy Scouts, libraries, the arts hospitals, the Denver Zoo, pregnant teens, and many young presidents at children's uh, young patients at children's hospital, and to help young minorities become successful businessmen and businesswomen, engineers, and productive members of our society. Many, many more, but you get the idea. Through the great American tradition we call philanthropy, virtually every resident of Colorado has been touched in some way by the voluntary, and I stress voluntary, generosity of my family's forefathers. But, And I'm here today actually as a proud steward of that generosity. And I also stand before you to sound an alarm. Our rich American tradition of voluntary philanthropy uh, is under attack. And it's a battle that is coming to a state house right near you. And believe it or not, some of our fellow citizens believe that they are best able to determine the racial and gender mix 
of our philanthropy staff, trustees, and grant recipients. When I first heard there was a group in California gathering political and legislative momentum for this zany idea, I thought, how can that possibly be? This is America. <laughs> 